Uh, why don't we move on to the next topic here? Topic two. New Breath of the Wild info. Ooh. Boys. If you don't want Breath of the Wild spoilers, you need to just stop listening right now. Mm-hmm. Um, yep, yep. Skip ahead. I'm like, I, I literally <laughs> just like skip this entire segment. Uh, I don't know how long it is at this point, so I can't. I can't yeah, tell you yeah. where to skip to. Uh, in the video, maybe I'll try to put it. Well, in the video, it'll be its own thing. So just skip this whole segment if you don't want to get spoiled. Um, audio is going to be a audio. Bit- I just just skip ahead to hear us talking about something that's not Zelda. Right. <laughs> um, so, Breath of the Wild, uh, Game Informer. All oh, those fine folks at Game Informer, they got to do something that, as far as we're aware, no other media outlet has gotten to do. Uh, when the Switch event was happening, and there was the, t- the two Breath of the Wild demos that we knew about. There was the one they got to play on the show floor, or well, it's not a show floor, it was just a floor where the media got to play the game. And it was just the demo that we got to play back at E3. Yeah. And then there was a second demo that they weren't allowed to touch that apparently was the full game, and that's where they showed uh, where a Nintendo employee would, like, answer questions and just show off one of the stables and a few of the things out in the world that they wanted to show you but they didn't want to show you everything like there was a one shrine they would do that looked really easy but then they wouldn't actually talk to the person at the shrine to show you it yeah because spoilers or (laughs) right right whatever reason it might be uh so there apparently was a third thing going on uh at least for just game informer as far as we know and Basically, the way they said it, because they had posted like their their podcast, their Game Informer show, and on there they said, well, we got there, we were playing the demo, and all of a sudden they just like pulled us aside to a back room, and like two of us got to sit down and just play Breath of the Wild for like three plus hours. That's ridiculous. Like, and for, for starters, I'm jealous. For starters, yeah, right. Bloop. Um, <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry uh, for an audio version. I was uh, doing something a little inappropriate, but the. Uh, they got taken to a back room and got to play Breath of the Wild, not just like playing from the beginning for three hours. They were, as, as they described it, it looked like there was already save files, and they were just dropped into different save files to experience different parts of the game. Um, and one of the save files kind of dropped them in at a stable, uh, and they got to learn a whole bunch of new things about the stables. Like, they're, like every stable is ran by a unique, a unique character, so it's not like one character runs all the stables. <laughs> no. <laughs> and then it just magically appears at each one. Yeah, they're like video games, man, video games. Right. Uh, and that each stable is going to have its own unique characters that, that, you know, go to it and leave from there to go back to wherever their village is or something. Um, and they have a purpose to be there. And it's also like, it's kind of also serves as a bazaar, like in Skyward Sword in the main village, where you go in and it's where you can get like, your potions and your upgrades and, uh, you know, whatever, your storage. You can also sleep. They also have like, a, like an, I, I guess, an inn. Like a inn kind of hotel thing. Yeah. You, can, you, you sleep at it. And here's the cool thing. Uh, this is the first time we've heard of this, is that when you go to sleep, you have an option that you can pay extra rupees. And I don't know if... So, I wish this was true in real life. You just pay money and you get to deep sleep or something. Right. But somehow you pay money and then you wake up and you have a temporary extra heart until you get damage done. And like, you know, however much you pay determines how many extra hearts you get. So say say you have, you come in, come in with your four hearts and then you pay 100 rupees. You wake up the next day with four extra hearts on top of those four, but they're yellow and as soon as you get hit, and they they don't they, replenish. Yeah, it's kind of like a kind of like a temporary shield that you get. Yeah. In, in some games, um, so like that was really cool to find out. Uh, we know that we've known in the past that there's like some food items you can make that do the same thing. Um, so it, I guess this is just another way to do it if you don't happen to have the supplies and you know there's a really difficult boss coming up or something, and you just want to really pad your your health as much as you can. Uh, really cool thing, personally. Um, but I, I think, you know, beyond that, you know, by the way, we are going to be talking about a dungeon soon. Um, they got to go out into the world and just do anything they want. They weren't told what to do. Um, and this I is, wish she 3 was kind of like that, yeah. where they didn't kind of yeah. try to force you what to do. Yeah. And, and you know, it, because this was the full game, um, you would figure, oh, they don't want you to find things. No, they, they, they did. And this was probably Game Informer specific because they were under massive NDAs and because Game Informer has now stretched what they've done into a month-long coverage lead up to Breath of the Wild. So it's kind of like every day they're releasing new info. So even by the time you hear this, there's going to be new info that we're not discussing because we don't know it. Right. Um, and it's 
it, it's interesting uh, that they got that opportunity. And I have, I have to think it's because they're a magazine entity, so they got to plan out ahead. Um, but like there were some really cool things that they discovered. Like we knew horses could die, but even them knowing that going in, it shocked them when it actually happened. Yeah. Yeah, actually, he shot his own horse, I think, yeah, if no, I remember yeah. right. He was using bomb arrows, and in yep. the midst of using them... He, like, the horse he, ran through, and it... Like, the horse died from, blew up. from the arrows. Yeah. And it's like, he's like, man, like, that, that really impacted him, because, like, even though he didn't get that horse, it was named Kyle or something. Yeah, it was Kyle, yeah. Um, like, he still felt the connection to the horse, because this never happened in Zelda before. Right. Like, you, um, especially in this game, it seems like the horses... Um, develop relationships with you because you soothe them you feed them you can make them like you better so they uh do things for you which i know sounds like a slave make them like you so they do exactly what you want them to do but yeah. it's a horse yeah this is just i mean yeah. what do we do to horses anyway we put right. races in real life yeah we do, like come on um but in this game that's not what it, it, although that's like the literal sense of what's happening um you're doing it to get a reward at the same time, it feels like you're developing a relationship with that horse, unlike in the past when you're just kind of handed Epona. Right, yeah. Like, this is your horse. Like in Twilight Princess, Epona's already your horse. Or in uh, Ocarina of Time, it really doesn't feel like you earn the horse, per se. Like, you don't have a choice. <laughs> like, that's just the way the game goes. Here, <laughs> Here you, you go. have to choose the horse. horses you have. Um, but some of them are really, really hard to sneak up on, mm-hmm. and they have all different well, stats, different personalities. Um, and and it's, they have personalities. right. Like, that that I mean, not personality. Oh, they're talking to you, but just how how they behave. Right. Like some are going to be a lot rougher with you than mm-hmm. others, and take yeah. a lot, be a lot harder to tame, and you need to have them for a lot longer and treat them differently. Like maybe uh, it's even possible. No one's asked this question yet, but it's even possible that you know the horses because of those different personalities, you might have to do, you might have to tame them in different ways. Like yeah, you always have your soothe, but right. if you give one horse an apple, another horse might say, screw that. Yeah, right. Yeah. Apples actually piss me off and give me hives. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, and spit it out at you and get angry at you and yeah. actually prefer something different. A maybe they want maybe or... maybe for some reason they want cooked horse meat. I don't know. Hey, why not? Why not? Um, so like hey, maybe they're one of the four horsemen of the apocalypse. Yeah. You never know. And like this is like the smallest thing in, in here that that, but but it kind of brings in this sense of this world being alive. Right. Because yeah. you learn to care for this thing. That you or an enemy killed. I mean, I'm assuming you didn't mean to get the horse killed, so it's oh, not right. by accident. Yeah. Um, and the thing is, you can do, you can actually use the horse, and you can like kick things too. Yeah, and actually, some of them have actually they all have I think different strengths yes, and yes. stuff so like, like that. So, so you can actually use them in combat. It's encouraged to, but at the same time, you take a risk if you use them in combat. Um, so it was really strange to to hear that this thing that they didn't they didn't capture. They had already felt something for, and it died, and it was just like this big, right. shocking thing, like an emotional moment that's like, whoa. Yeah. Like, games don't do this. Right. And, and not, like, they weren't saying just, like, Zelda games don't do this. Like, games don't do this. Like, yeah, they don't. When, when you have your horse in The Witcher 3, that's your horse. Yeah, right. It doesn't yeah. die. It might run away. It doesn't die. Yeah. Um, so, it's like, games just don't, don't do this to you um let you spend all this time training something and just rip it from you on um, by an accident and i know another thing speaking of uh horses being different too from other zelda games you cannot just call your horse from anywhere you have to be within a certain distance too which which again makes sense that makes sense yeah i'm like cell phoning my horse across the <laughs> world to run to me hey i wish i could how you doing how come you on doing? come on over uh so uh so that was kind of cool. And then yeah. they talked about the weather. So now explain what they got surprised about with the weather. <laughs> uh so apparently they were in a giant lightning storm and they decided that they were carrying a metal shield and sword, I think. no I think it was short and oh, sword and yeah, shield yeah. actually. And they were struck by lightning and died. Yeah. That is amazing. Yes. Um <laughs> Couple reasons it's amazing. One that that's even in the game at all, and that <laughs> basically a ra- lightning rod. And and as they describe it, they kind of make death fun. Yeah, right. Well, I mean, like like you died from it. And you're just like, wait, what? Yeah, I mean, we had the <laughs> we had the one video from E3 where you just decided to Go once naked, you died yeah. and you, we just turned it into a oh, death can video I, can because I die, can I dive into ice cold water and survive with no clothes on? 
For a little no, bit. you can <laughs> For like more than like a half a second. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, you better hope you're, there's something to grab onto. Uh, so it's like, man, that, that lightning, though. Uh, and, they, and they said, like, uh, apparently what they were doing in the tender reps were like, uh, we didn't know this was going to happen. Like, <laughs> like they're just like, uh, yeah, okay. And, and it's kind of like what uh, AJ Anoma said in the past. He doesn't even know everything that there is to find in this game because um, everything is so dynamic and so free-flowing that oh. there are situations that are going to come up where... Uh, not everybody on the Zelda team knows that's even a thing that could happen. Not everybody might know you can get struck by lightning. Like, well, or, right. or maybe they knew you can get struck by lightning. They didn't know they put it in the game where your metal will attract it, like just like it logically would. Right. Um, especially when you're in a world like this where it's basically, here's a wide open field and you're the only metal thing in it. <laughs> you probably would Bye. be what attracts, attracts the lightning. Um, you know, obviously people getting hit in real life by lightning is a rarity, but we have a lot more metal things out in the world too. Right, and... It's also not as funny, but no, I know, it, this is also a game. Yeah, so a game. Like, so I, anybody out there who's yeah. got been struck by lightning, we're not saying yeah. it's funny at all. But no. it's funny in this game. In the game, um, and the thing is, like, it's a, just another layer to the game. Like, you need to de-equip your metal items and equip wood ones, or equip like you know maybe you have one of the Stalfos arms that you can beat things with. That's not metal, right? Equip stuff that um, lets you progress through the world without having as big of a threat. Like, I think. You could still randomly get hit by lightning, but oh, yeah, because like be like a, like, a like, I said, like lightning hit trees, it hit the ground. Like you can still get hit, but it's not like specifically going to target you. Um, and they even said like there's cool things you can do with this. Like if you have a metal shield, you can just take it, throw it at a group of enemies, and the lightning will strike, it'll strike that. Enemies. Yeah, and it'll hit um, the enemies. That that so is like, pretty awesome. Yeah, it's it's just that extra layer. Like we we saw in person. Through playing it, how amazing the physics engine was. Oh, definitely. But we didn't see how weather is affected by it. I, I don't think we even saw much we, we for weather, weather at all. all. No. No, I mean, it was just saw, cold. The only weather we saw were, were like on the, the actual fake weather in the booth when you find the plates on the ground. Oh, push it, yeah. And then it would yeah. be a thunderstorm. Thunder, the thun, booth. Thunderstorm, quote unquote. Yeah. Um, no, so, man. Well, like, it makes me curious, like, how, what happens in a snowstorm? Right. Like, is there actual blizzards? And, and, and they mentioned actually there is, because yeah. they did mention that they were walking through the through the snow, and all of a sudden a couple enemies just came out of nowhere and surprised the heck out of them because yep. they didn't see them. Yeah. Um. So like they, what, what what's really curious to me about this is the 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 attention to detail. Like as you know, who has said several times, like he's so proud of like the sound of the hooves and everything. And I know that's just one thing, and he's repeating it because he must be, like, really, really proud of how that turned out. But like, that's not it. That's one minor detail in a game mm-hmm. oh, that definitely. pays a lot of attention to minor details. As an example, when you run in the snow, you move slower. In yeah. Real life, when you run in the snow, you move slower. That that <laughs> makes sense. <laughs> yeah, that yes. Yes. For people who don't know what snow is, yes, you do actually <laughs> run slower. <laughs> yeah. It, it's. It's just crazy, uh, all the stuff that they experienced that no one else um, outside of Nintendo themselves has probably experienced at that point. And um, just how they said there's constantly something going on. So, like, a lot of people, uh, a lot of fears with Breath of the Wild have been that there, it's such an expansive game that it's going to feel empty. Um, and I, I guess based on their experience, now that they got off the plateau and got to explore freely... Um, they said they mostly tried to go north. Who knows? Maybe they were trying to get to Death Mountain. I don't know. Um, but they just got to go north for a few hours, and it, it just kind of... There was always something. Like Even if you weren't fighting, there was something going on in the environment that yep. would draw your attention to it, and you never felt like you were bored. And, and I think that's the big thing. People worry about, oh, it's empty. I'm going to get bored. Apparently not. There's so much going on. Oh, right. Yeah, there's, um, there's, you can't with nature and with the physics engine. Yeah, you know, with you know, with weather. Uh, you know, the, like they said, you know, they were in snow, they were in sand, they were. I mean, they were all over the place. In, you know, these few hours, and everything just worked. Um, and this is where now now we get into stuff that that's extra spoil spoiler, extra spoilery. Um, and that's a, they actually got to do a dungeon, and we're not, we're not talking about a shrine. Yeah. They literally said, this is a dungeon. Um, it has a boss at the end of it. Uh, they tell the name of the boss. So, like, they ex- describe the boss, and they've now released a screenshot of the boss, which 
I'll probably throw up in the video version somewhere here. Uh, and it... It sounds like the dungeon that they played isn't something that's as long as, say, a dungeon in Twilight Princess. And Twilight Princess arguably had the longest dungeons in the series. The game was basically, here's a bunch of dungeons, everything else is in between. Yeah. Um, and the dungeons were really long and really elaborate. Uh, they said this feels more like dungeons in Zelda 1, where they're shorter, uh, but there are a lot of clever puzzles. So mm -hmm. instead of focusing on having a, a, a massive dungeon... Um, and figuring out how to traverse it, you have a smaller dungeon, uh, but there's a lot of very, very unique puzzle elements to it that aren't always obvious. And actually, if I remember right, they did say there is actually multiple ways to solve each puzzle, too. Yes, because uh, as they point out, in this particular dungeon, uh, there is a Sheikah Slate place where you like the dungeon's moving, and the Sheikah Slate thing allows you to manipulate the dungeon, um, lets you twist it or whatever. And that let that that gives you access to different things and lets you try out different ideas. Um, like there's this. Uh, what, what are they? We finally know what that black gunk is called. Um, that that emanates the, from Calamity Ganon. Oh, I um, I don't I, I forget. Yeah, I, forget I don't what it's remember. Called, but like in that in that gunk, there's eyes. Ha <laughs> ha! Zelda thing. Shoot it in the eye. Like yeah. that's how you beat everything in Zelda. Right. Um. So you defeat these eyes and it clears out the gunk. So, like, that's what some of the puzzles are. But a lot of the puzzles are physics-based, and it sounds like that's kind of the gist of what dungeons are going to be in here. Like, it's all about physics and manipulating the environment. And I am totally for that. Oh, yeah. Um, totally. Like, one thing I always said about Zelda over, after all these years is that, okay, I've done 17,000 block-pushing puzzles. <laughs> None of these feel different anymore. Yeah, right. Like, it feels like something I've done before. Um, maybe the answer is different. Maybe I gotta push it to a different spot. But I've done this, yeah, like a bunch of times. Um, and I think that's what's really unique about how these dungeons are being approached. We have no idea this is a physics engine. Yeah, it's all being done with something Zelda's never done before. Um, that's crazy to me. And uh, they said it's extremely fun. Um, and uh, when they got to the boss, it kind of opened up. And if you look in the screenshot, you could tell it almost looks like they're outside. Um, somewhere. I don't know. We, we, they don't really go over the fight too much. Um, outside of saying that, like, it's a faceless boss, which you can see in the screenshot. And it has, like, an arm cannon shooting missiles at you. Um, and, like, shooting spikes. It was shooting spikes at you. Um, and some other stuff, crazy stuff going on. And, and they did beat it. Um, they didn't tell us what happens after you beat it. Like, do you gain a heart? Like, they didn't go over that. At least they haven't gone over that yet. Right. As far as I'm yeah. Aware. Uh, it wasn't talked about in the in the article in Game Informer's magazine. So, um, and the thing apparently is like part of Calamity Ganon. Um, may, maybe that's why it's faceless. I have no idea. But it, it's called Cal Calamity something. Yeah. Um, I can't. I really apologize for not knowing the name off the top of my head right now. And it the, it, it it is said at some point during the battle or before or after that it is. Uh, part of uh, of calamity again and so mm -hmm. it's possible that all the big bosses in the game um are like come together and or like or like part of calamity again himself yeah part of his entity that come yeah. together at the end um, of a lot of theories we could throw around for that and i gotta say none of this sounds bad to me no no not at all <laughs> sounds amazing so we learn all this stuff and there's been a slew of other things. There was some new, like Nintendo released some new uh, official art showing off like an all all brand new design for a specific Korok that we've never seen before. Um, and there's just new information trickling out every day. So as I said, by the time you listen to this, there'll be even more stuff out that we're not going to be discussing. Um, so having sat down and you read the, you read the article for sure because I yep. had you sit down and read it. Yep. Uh, one because it's awesome. Uh, eh, it. I didn't quite like the flow of it, but yeah. Well, the flow of the article. Yes. It was a yeah. little strange. It, it kind of jumped um, from here to there yes, to here it, to it there. Did. It yeah, did. And, so. and I think, you know, I don't know if that's a, I don't know. It, it's hard because I'm not behind the scenes with them. I think right. there's things they weren't allowed to talk about in the article. Right. I, I don't feel like it, it felt like it was supposed to be one cohesive story, but it, it wasn't. Yeah. It, and I, I, again, like it, it if you haven't read the article yet, I, you know, go purchase the digital copy of Game Informer if you're interested. Uh, it's like a four or five. No, it's a 12-page piece or something. It's really long. 
Um, but yeah, remember, it's a magazine, yeah. so like there's a lot of big images, so it's not as long as it appears. Right. Um, but it does have new screenshots in there, so enjoy those. Um, they are nice. So like, you, yeah, it, it kind of felt like there was clear sections, but there was no flow between the. Yeah, sections. no, not at all. Um, and again, I think that's a lot of because they just they played for a few hours. They're trying to summarize that down to you know X right. Pages, yeah, no, no, I get it. And they either weren't allowed to talk about certain things or. It wasn't something that was noteworthy enough to really bring up. It's just part of the experience that you're going to experience every time you play. Yeah. Um, and I don't know if the, the pages that I read were out of order or no, anything. No, no they, they were in order? Okay. In order. So, yeah, yeah, like I said, it just kind of felt, something felt a little off about it. But, I mean, it was good information all around, though. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, you know that about the information. Setting aside, you know, the abruptness of some of, of some of the flow of the piece. Knowing all this new stuff, what do you think? I mean, you you it, are as hyped for this game as I am, and it, that's crazy because I've like this has been what I do. Yeah, uh, it, it's March third here yet. That's <laughs> that's that's all I can say. I mean, it, it needs to get here like now. Yesterday. Yeah. Yesterday. Um, and you know, I'm still still pressing my contact at Nintendo. I'm like, come on. And what am I gonna know about if I'm getting right, the Switch yeah. early? Because like I. If anything, not just to review the game, I just want to play it. Right. Oh, definitely. I just want to play it. Um, so, like, I applaud Game Informer. They yes, definitely. Job. Yeah. Um, Lucky it, them. It, you know, go go ahead and go over to the site if you're looking for more information uh, about it. Uh, obviously, I'd love to say come visit NintendoPrime.net, but we're, we're slowing our news coverage down a little bit um, in anticipation of some new hires and some other things going on at the site. Uh but we will be picking it up as we get closer to launch. But Game Informer themselves, like what we're posting about the games coming from them. So like, go to their site, check them out. Uh, you know, they they posted a Game Informer show where they spend like the first hour of the show, or almost the first hour of the show, talking about their experience with this game um, behind the scenes. And in it, they show footage of a lot of what they did. So, mm-hmm. like, if you want to see this in action, not just read about it in the magazine, like go there. They 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 did an awesome job. Uh, another thing they did, and this was pretty obvious if they got to do something that most other people didn't do, they also got to interview Shigeru Miyamoto and Eiji Aonuma. And I gotta say, it's the most entertaining interview I've ever seen. You will go with that. For a video. We'll go with that. For a video. <laughs> um, I don't know how informational it was. Yeah. Yeah. It was either extremely informational or a complete or hoax. Complete hoax, or it was both. Partially in between, yeah. Like, they labeled it, you know... Here's 51 questions uh, posed. Uh, I, don't, I think they said it was about Breath of the Wild, but a couple of the questions weren't about Breath of the Wild. Um, right, yeah. There is that. But, like, <laughs> in here, there's things like, you know, like, they asked about Paper Mario, and then, like, Eiji Noah basically said, like, we're working on that. And it's like... Yeah. Wait, are you uh, serious? Are, are you saying you're making Paper Zelda yeah, right, right now? Yeah. Or are you just, like... Working on a Paper Mario for the Switch. The, like, or, or like, yeah. it, it was really weird... Well, I mean, um, he did point at his at his shirt. I know, so. I know. And then, like, then, then, like, Miyamoto did like a pose, and I was yeah. just like, "Okay, is this?" Were they joking? And, and yeah. like, this because kind of kind of brings back to like Eiji Nomu way uh, back in 2014 when he said, "Oh, I didn't explicitly say that was Link," and it blew up into this big thing. Oh, was it a female? Like, yeah. Blah blah yeah. blah blah. Um, and it almost felt like a lot like that, where it's like they're kind of going along with it. So I don't know. Right. But then there's things like. There's some things that feel like it's a joke, but then it's actually legit in other cases. As an example, uh, Eiji Nomo was asked uh, what Link's last name is. He looked over at Shigeru Miyamoto because he... Yeah, they... they he, Eiji yeah. did not create Link, so he yeah. wouldn't... Uh, you know, that's not yeah. a question he's ever answered. And Shigeru Miyamoto's like, it's like Mario. And then and then the game guy's like, what? Uh, so it's a Link Mario? His last name's Mario? Yeah, and no. He's like, and he's like, no, Link Link. Yeah. Because Mario's last name is Mario. It's Mario Mario. And it's Luigi yeah. Mario. Like, that's, that's a little that's weird. That's the last name of the Mario Bros. Well, I guess that's it makes sense, yeah. Mario, Mario Brothers. Brothers, yeah, that yeah. is true. Mario Mario. And yeah, Luigi that is Mario. true. So, like, yeah. it makes sense. It kind of, I mean, I'd never really thought of it that about. way. Yeah. See, it's not what you think about. Yeah. Like, in Zelda, this was a Link Link. And it's like, why not? Is he joking? Or well, I don't like, know, because then they both, like, turned to each other and kind of laughed at it, well, too. Well, yeah, but, like, so. Because each of them was like, well, I'd. Not something we've ever thought about. You're right. And I mean, Mario, like, instantly, he's like, it's like Mario. And it's like, so has he thought about it, or yeah, right? yeah. or is he just coming up with this? Like, and there's several the different news sites out there. They're like, "Oh man, Link's last name is Link," and it's like, yeah. "Do we know for sure?" Yeah, right. But but at the same time, Mario's last name is Mario, so it's like they literally referenced it's like Mario. Yeah, right. So it's like, well, for Mario, it is Mario Mario, so it could be Link Link. 
Um, it, it's honestly a completely irrelevant thing. Right. Um, especially since there's multiple Just links. Interesting but, question. Yeah. Um, it was a very interesting interview. Um, there were, m- maybe my favorite question was when they were like, hey, uh, can we trust these translators? <laughs> right. And then they pan over the translators, translators smiling. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So, oh, and then it said, yes, you can trust them. Yeah. But, um. You know, because obviously they were probably surprised with some of the the translated answers they were getting back. Like, really? Yeah. Like, Wait, like, what? Yeah. Or Wait, what? Uh, you know, like, uh, or there's gonna be a Paper Mario or Paper yeah. Zelda? Like, Paper what's Zelda, going on? Yeah. Um, right. So I don't know. It, it's just a, a fun interview. Uh, we you can go to on YouTube. I think they finally have it on YouTube now. Um, and look up fifty one questions about Breath of the Wild or something. It should pop up as like the top video. Um, just crazy. I don't know what to believe from it. So I don't know yeah, what right. I want to talk yeah. about more more information we could possibly glean from it just because i don't i don't know what we can glean from it um even at zelda informer uh you know darren was asking me uh or yeah just asking like in general like what to what to do with this thing because like (laughs) do we break it up like normal and make a bunch of stories out of it or like what and i was just like "Eh, yeah i don't this is what the only interview i've ever seen or watched or read that i'm just like Throw it the video could up be and, true or yeah. it could be BS, and I think we should just make a single post about it. And he's like, yeah, I, I agree. So that's yeah. exactly what they did at Zelda Informer. Um, so, yeah, it, it's just fun. It's great. And I, I think that's going to do it for uh, for Breath of the Wild. Uh, else I do have one more thing to add. Uh, yeah, I know, right? Right. Holy cow. Stop the presses. I actually have something to add. Uh, I don't remember whether it's in the article or if it was in the interview, but I know um, – I can't remember which one of them said that – Actually, I, and to what you were what we were saying before, I don't know if anybody actually knows everything in this game, because they had so many different uh, groups of people working on it. They had one per, one group specifically working on animals, just just animals and their movement and everything else like that. And they had another one working on like trees, and another one working on this and that. They had so many different teams working on this that I don't know if there is one person that really knows everything in this game, which is. Kind of crazy. Yeah, like the one guy, uh, there was, this is back during the Switch event uh, when they were doing a live stream. The one guy, uh, I think it was maybe Nintendo UK that was doing it. Um, one of the Nintendo refs was playing through it, and he went, he, had, he lit a torch and went over to a beehive, and the bees dissipated. So he was able to knock down the hive and get the chest, and yada, yada. Um, and the guy said, oh, you know, uh, the the person who was doing most of the talking was like, yeah, as you see, like, you know, that, that that's the thing you can do in the game. And the guy's like, actually, I didn't know that's like the guy who did it. He's like, actually, I didn't know that was a thing. Like, I just found that out now. <laughs> yeah. yeah right. <laughs> and he yeah. works at Nintendo. So it's like, yeah. like, it's crazy that there's so much in this game that no, no one person knows. Yeah. I, and like, it's probably, it's even probably even possible that no one person knows even everything that's possible in the game. Not just the stuff that's in it, but how things can be done. Like, there's going to be things done with this physics engine by gamers that Nintendo oh, yeah. had never even thought of. Oh, yeah. yeah. I just hope it doesn't, like, start flinging you off of cliffs like in, uh, what the heck is it, uh, Skyrim? Oh, yeah. Well, <laughs> well, Skyrim. You know, um, and, and, you know, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just browsing Zelda for it right now, look, looking if there's anything we missed. Uh, right. And we do recommend going over there. Yeah. It is, uh, it is a great site. It, like, the great site. Uh, I'm still technically editor in chief of it for a couple months, and uh, like they are really doing an excellent job. Um, you know, I so, so I've had some people ask me uh, in the past about Zelda Informer. It, like, since Zelda Informer kind of works on a process of posting content that other people have done. Like, you know, maybe they went to Nintendo Everything and saw the report, or they went to Go Nintendo, or they went to Game Informer in this case, or someone on Twitter. Um, so it's all like second or third hand information trickling down that Zelda Informer posts about. And I've often had people say, well, why? Like, why go there? Why not just go to Nintendo everything when they get it up faster? And all I can say is that in just now, like, when I want to look up stuff, it is so much easier to go to one site that has everything. So mm-hmm. going to Nintendo yeah. everything and having to type in Breath of the Wild and, you know, if they didn't tag something correctly, it's not, you're not going to find it in there. Right, um, you know, which actually I, I went back through some of my posts and I yeah, that, realized that I didn't have tags. That happens. So... Um, so it's like one of those things that um, I, I guess it's just it has everything in one spot. Yeah. Anything you want to know about Breath of the Wild that is out there is gonna is is either on or going to be on Zelda Informer at one point. Right. Um, and it's like that for every game. So uh, you know when 
obviously I'm a little biased because I, well, right. I, you know, I've been at her chief almost eight years there. Uh, but it's just, um, now, now that I'm kind of transitioning on my way out, uh, as emotional as that is for me, um, I still find it as like an excellent source, even like over what I do at Nintendo Prime. Even if we were on top of the Zelda news, I would still tell you the number oh. one Zelda news site on the on the internet, ZeldaInformer.com. Oh, definitely. Go there if yeah. you if you just want to gather up Zelda news and that's all you care about. Zelda Informer is the place to be. Um, come to us for we'll have Zelda news, but we also have a lot of other things, and right. it's easy to bury it. Um, and it's not going to get buried here. Uh, you know, as an example, like at the time that we we're recording this, you know, like the top thing, Zelda's lullaby can be heard in Breath of the Wild. Now, I know because I read this earlier today, um, it's not just that it can be heard. It can be heard in various different forms all over the overworld. It seems huh. to be like the general overworld theme. And every time you hear it in a different part of the overworld, it's completely different. And you might not even recognize it as. Um, I know for this report here, uh, one person heard it um, only by speeding up the video by like five times as fast. Oh, jeez. And you could hear it. Um, and it sounds like a master of doing this. Oh, thing. yeah. So, like there was a trailer once. Uh, for it was, I think it was the first trailer for Skyward Sword, um, where if you play the music in it backwards, it was all the way, or something like that. <laughs> Very like, nice. It, it was crazy. I, I, yeah, I think it was Skyward Sword. Um, so like Nintendo's really cool at doing this stuff. And what does this mean? Who knows? And I must have a greater context if this is the overall theme for the overworld. And it for those who said there's no music in the overworld, the, the, there's music. It's just subtle. Yeah, it's subtle. It, it's it's there to give you some ambient noise. But it's not there to detract you from the, like you shouldn't be traveling the overworld to hear the music. You should be traveling it to enjoy the world, and this is going to help enhance that experience. Right. Um, rather than like when you are playing Twilight Princess, you go into the thing and got this big epic music theme. It really doesn't matter what's going on around you. Um, you're just enjoying this epic song as you're riding <laughs> horse, and, and it's great. <laughs> it's sweet. I love yeah. Twilight Princess's Hyrule Field music, but it, you know, it's just I'm not. There's nothing in that world to enjoy. Right, and that's that's so, the. Point, I think to give you something to enjoy. This has a lot more to enjoy. Yeah, and so there's it's, a lot of things you want to pay attention to. Like I said you, earlier, enemies surprising them. Like you gotta use all your senses, man. Yeah, you might have heard of something that tipped you off that there was an enemy about to fly at you from behind and do six hearts damage. Yeah, yeah, they, that's right. They got jumped out of the snow and then just, just, just completely wrecked. destroyed. Just wrecked. Um, difficult game. They 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 spoke at length uh, on their Game Informer show about this is a difficult Zelda game and it takes you. If you're a Zelda veteran, it takes you by surprise. Because Zelda hasn't really been difficult like this in a long, long time. Not since Zelda 1, Zelda 2. Like, this is... When, when they went back to the roots to build an open-world Zelda game, it wasn't just the exploration. It was, yeah. like, this is a dangerous world, man. Yeah. It's dangerous. These aren't just enemies. You just waggle around yep. and dominate. You're just randomly waiting for old man to pop up. It's dangerous to go um, alone. Take and this. They, and they did know, They did know. and this is something we knew from our experience. Um, it probably didn't stand out to you because you don't have as much experience with Zelda games. Uh, but most Zelda games, even when you have multiple enemies on screen, say you have five enemies, oh, yeah, yeah. they, they wait to attack, attack you at once. Or they, so like, you're they only ever really dealing yeah. with one at once. Yep. Um, <laughs> Not this time. No, there's no waiting <laughs> turn. You could be trying to dodge one and then three more of them are trying to just drill you. Um, yeah. it, it's crazy. Uh, it's... I almost said expected. I don't expect it. No, but it's it's real. Yeah, that's what like if like when you watch movies and it's a gang of people game around one guy and he's fighting one yeah, at the time yeah. beating hold, them all. Hold that's on, not how things on, work. Hold on, guys, one at a time, guys, one right, at a time, one yeah, at a time. Yeah, yeah. Like like that's not how things work. No. Like I asked someone who's gotten beaten up before. Like no, they all come at you at once. Yeah. They're they're. I mean, yeah. There's a risk they might hit each other, but they're probably gonna hit you a heck of a lot more. Oh yeah. Um. You know, you always hope that the one guy socks the other guy too hard by accident, and then that starts to fight with them, and they leave you alone. But that that just it doesn't happen. Right. They just get mad, and then they just hit you even harder. Um, so I won't get into, into yeah, yeah. any more of that. But uh, yeah, it's just a really cool thing. There's this game, man. Yeah, I, I think to just wrap this up, it, it's amazing. This, March third needs to get here. This game, right, dude. This is mm, all right.